24-7 operation, usually staffed anywhere between uh, two to five meteorologists currently. Right now there are five on, well, four and a half because I'm on there, but <laughs> I'm in and I'm not in at times. Um, so at this point, the way the room is set up, we, we do look after all of Ontario public and marine forecasts. That includes the Great Lakes as well as five recreational lakes. And uh, on this side of the room, the severe weather side of the room, there, these are the guys issuing all the warn watches, warnings, statements, and uh, generally supervisors watching over all the forecasts at any given time. On this side of the room, uh, we have uh, our public desk right here and our marine desk, and they generally are responsible for a lot of the text forecasts. And of course, there's a lot of collaboration that goes on back and forth. It's a smaller, close quarters. You can ask Jen, who sat in here, and um, that it gets, it's, there's a lot of talking back and forth communication. Now it's kind of more sit down and produce the forecast. Uh, we have situational awareness monitors everywhere. Um, your radar, uh, water vapor, we even keep uh, some, a tweet deck up there with Twitter. An interesting resource. You have to be, uh, like, oh, people always laugh when I say it. There's, it's off, it's off and on. Uh, you know, you get some good reports, you get some people that are like, it's snowing, you know, that kind of report. Um, <laughs> and then you get people attacking you, even though I barely tweet, I still have people that seem to know where I work and they come right after you and say, oh, why do you not issue this? Why do you not issue that? And it's like, you look at more than just raw model and stuff like that, you have to consider a lot more factors. And uh, just general radar and alerts. We don't have any alerts right now. Yesterday we had uh, some frost advisories out. So I'm just gonna go over the workstation here. Like I can show you. 24/7. Yes. Are people in here? Yes. 24/7. Yep. So it's not like this room is around. never empty. And if, if it okay. is, if something happens, computer systems go down, server uh, server goes down. We do have contingency offices that we call them, and they take over the forecast. So uh, it is constantly constantly monitored. Okay. Even in the event of like fire drill, we have to call and say keep an eye on the forecast, and then we come back and start back up again. Um, so yeah, I can show you some of the tools and software we have. Um, and this desk actually is a new desk, something that started up in April. And uh, basically what it does is a lot of the special forecasts. I know there's a few people on our uh, PIOC distribution list. I saw your name on the email, so you're getting the convective outlook. And yes, I've already drafted the one. Yeah, I've already drafted the one for this afternoon. It's not a public product, um, but yeah, I get some specialized products from that. Uh, in general, this is main weather watch scene, just various satellite um, observations and tweet deck. I use tweet deck quite well, and I do see people tweeting me tweet a lot, you know, and stuff like that. <laughs> it's good. It's good. And is this where the, the RFD desk used to be? It used to be, to be yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so part of this desk duty, along with specialized client forecasts, is to uh, watch over severe weather, and it will be extended starting next month. To 12 hours to help out with the convective weather because I said we staff between two and five and typically on the day shifts we have five on severe weather days we could fill up all these stations there could be like yeah, seven or eight of us in here. yeah like the, the one night I keep referring to the one night but there was there were I don't even remember how many it was sometime in June when we had wicked thunderstorms all night I think there was a tornado near King Carlton oh, actually on that one. last year yeah that was a long day yeah, it was like a lightning day. <laughs> it, was, it was beautiful driving home to um, Yeah, so just general weather watch, different streams on Twitter. Very, uh, it's an up and coming resource. How much time would you spend checking the tweet? Uh, it's really as an as we have time kind of thing, because some days it's just so chaotic to just go over your menu and forecast, because that, that's our priority. <laughs> Um, so we try to look at it as we have time, and some days it's, you need someone just reading it. And in the summer, the desk behind you actually has two summer students, uh, will actually be working, they actually work that desk and they'll take the phone calls to monitor social media, which is uh, becoming quite, quite a useful tool, but even like last year we get faulty tornado reports, like we had, we had it. Three years ago, yeah. There was one that just came into our inbox last year and it was, from Pembroke, and it was actually a place we were worried about having a tornado, and it was a beautiful photo. It was a Photoshop picture. Wow. You were able to do. Summer student last year actually was able to trace it back to its the original. Google yeah, search. Google, Google yeah. image search and found it like right down to like the coke can on the curb and stuff like that. Everything, 
and it was still, and, you know, and that picture was from like a couple of years ago. And like, but it's obviously Photoshop, so it's uh yeah there's a there's a lot of challenges um with regards to that and a lot of people are seeing that it's almost becoming yeah. a workload issue here because you get so get many it. and yeah. everyone wants a tornado and that's the thing no one no one wants to hear oh you had straight line wind damage because yes we go out and do the investigations <clears throat> no one wants to hear that and it's like they're just as strong yeah. so that's the one that drives us nuts it's like every little cloud's a tornado or something like that so yeah so it's a lot of a lot of filtering and i know it's a very it's a very hot topic Another resource we've become very accustomed to using is a uh, collection of webcams that we will go in like MNR webcams. I was looking up in the north because I'm suspecting there might be uh, a satellite. I'm thinking that might be Fort McMurray smoke, um, which can actually impact the forecast because the models don't pick up on it at all. So that could be uh, a yeah, challenge Yeah, during Fort McMurray we had uh, the, 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 or the uh, actual screenshot of the airport which helped him. Yeah, oh yeah, Tracking. yeah, exactly, because just the auto station there too, yeah. uh, so we have the webcams, very useful in winter, particularly in the north, because you have hogs, and then there's these huge gaps of where there's no information along the roads, and it helps to see impact, but it helps with things like snow melt, uh, something, we're looking at a lot more snow melt with rain, and then we'll see just how much, have potential for flooding and stuff like that, it's a big, uh, it's, it's an area that uh, we're starting to work a lot more in. Uh, working with our local partners. Um, so yeah, just general radar. Uh, this is what I'm working on for this afternoon. 